Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisper and Lesson 4 of the General Class Operator Element 3 exam course. In this one, we'll go over the G1D, G1 Delta questions, which pretty much covers volunteer examiners. The G1D questions cover volunteer examiners and volunteer examiner coordinators, as well as temporary identification. All right, let's get going. Alright, the first question, what, what is the proper way to identify when transmitting on general class frequencies if you have a CSCE for the required elements, but your upgrade from technician has not appeared in the ULS database? Well, the, the, the procedure is to give your call sign followed by the words temporary AG or temporary alpha golf. And from what I've heard, this is a legacy, legacy system, which is going to kind of fade away soon, but who knows. But if you have a receipt saying that you have passed the general class elements, and you want to operate on general class frequencies, just follow your call sign with temporary AG. What license examinations may you administer when you are an accredited VE or volunteer examiner holding a general class operator license? Well, a general class VE can administer a technician license examination. And with the exception of extra class operators who don't have a higher class of license to administer their exams, Volunteer examiners can only administer tests for lower class licenses. Which of the following band segments may you operate on if you are a technician class operator and have a CSCE for general class privileges? Well, if you pass the general class exam and you got your CSCE from the examiner saying that you passed, you can operate on any general class band segment and just remember to identify yourself with temporary AG at the end of your call. And this makes sense. If you pass the exam, you can operate in the privileges right away. Which of the following are requirements for administering a technician class operator examination? Well, the possible answers, the correct one is at least three VEC or volunteer examination coordinator accredited general class or higher volunteer examiners must be present. So there must be at least three volunteer examiners and they must be general class or higher. The VEC or is basically an organization which accredits general or accredits volunteer examiners and there's several out there. Um, ARRL is one of them. So if you want to become a volunteer, volunteer examiner, you got to get accredited by one of these VEC organizations. Which of the following is sufficient for you to be an administering VE for a technician class operator license examination? Well, the answer is a FCC general class or higher license and a VEC accreditation. So kind of the same theme of the previous questions. You need to be higher license class than the examination being given and you have to be an accredited VEC volunteer examiner. When must you add the special identifier AG after your call sign if you are a technician class licensee and have a CSCE for general class operator privileges? Well, you got to add AG after your call sign whenever you operate using general class frequency privileges. If you're operating on the general class frequencies prior to getting your general class license through the ULS, you have to throw in the AG. Now, if you operate on technician class license privileges, you don't have to do that. So whenever you're operating in general class, add AG after your call sign. Who is responsible at a volunteer exam session for determining the correctness of the answer on the exam? Well, the volunteer examiners administering the exam are the ones who are responsible. And since they're in charge of the session, this makes sense. What document must be issued to a person that passes an exam element? Well, the document is a CSCE, and that, that's how it comes on the exam, CSCE. And what that stands for is Certificate of Successful Completion of Examination. So if you get one after exam, don't lose it. If there's a glitch in the system, you're going to need that to prove that you passed that portion of the exam. How long is the Certificate of Successful Completion of Examination, or CSCE, valid for exam element credit? And the answer is 365 days. Um, now, this was a big deal back when the Morse code requirement was still there for certain licenses because you took the Morse code element separate from the actual exam element and if you passed one you had to pass the other to get the, the license so if you didn't have that CSCE when you pass the other element of the exam for the license you're kinda of screwed so it's not so important anymore but it's a still a question on the exam what is the minimum age that one must be to qualify as an accredited volunteer examiner? Well, you have to be at least 18 years old. And a volunteer examiner deals with legal stuff, so you must be a legal adult, and that's kind of a easy way to remember it. 
What criteria must be met for a non-U.S. citizen to be an accredited volunteer examiner? Well, the person must hold a U.S. amateur radio license of general class or above. So non-U.S. citizens, U.S. citizens, it's all kind of the same. So you don't have to be a citizen, you just have to be a U.S. general class license holder. Volunteer examiners are accredited by what organization? Well, volunteer examiners are accredited by a volunteer examiner coordinator. And this is a little tricky of a, uh, of a question because it sounds a bit obvious compared to the other answers. Also, don't get a volunteer examiner coordinator confused with a person. It's actually an organization. And there's a whole bunch out there. Um, well, I will not say a whole bunch. There's several out there. One of them is the RRL. An organization that is not a VEC is the FCC. So the FCC is not a volunteer examiner coordinator. But it must be acknowledged in writing by the FCC and conform to the Part 97 rules. When may you participate as a VE in administering an amateur radio license examination? Well, you can be a, participate as a VE once you have been granted your general class license and received your VEC accreditation. And there is a test and a process to get this for most VECs. And for the ARRL, you can find the process on their website. And it's fairly simple. I, I managed to get mine all knocked out in about a few hours one afternoon. So being a VE is a great way to give back to the HAMP community. And having more around allows for more flexibility and more exam sessions and thus more amateurs to talk to. So everybody wins. And that is the end of the G1D review and part one of this video. Part two is the quiz, and if you have trouble finding the quiz, you can find it at hamwhisper.com under the ham courses page. So take a break, relax, get that pencil and piece of paper ready, and I will see you in part two.